As we all know, Fernando Alonso is a fantastic driver, but when it comes to his personality, he can be quite confrontational. And this has caused plenty of people and teams to fall out with Fernando Alonso. And in some cases, he has ruined some F1 teams. So in today's video, I'm going to analyse how Fernando Alonso with his personality and character does ruin F1 teams. And if you want to find out exactly why I say this, make sure to check out this video. Now I must make one point clear before I start analysing Fernando Alonso's falling out with certain teams. In terms of driving skill and speed, for me, Fernando Alonso is absolutely for sure one of the top 10 greatest drivers of all time. He has always been a fantastic driver and still to this day is one of the best racing drivers in the world. I just want to make this clear so people understand that I'm not talking about his skill, I'm talking about his mentality and his character. But now let's start off with the first case of Fernando Alonso ruining an F1 team and start off with McLaren in 2007. Now of course, plenty of years after the fact, we know that his relationship with McLaren during that season was terrible. But what made it terrible? Well, it really started off at the 2007 Monaco Grand Prix where Fernando won that Grand Prix ahead of his teammate at the time, Lewis Hamilton. And the reason the bad relationship started there is because all throughout the Grand Prix, Fernando was leading just ahead of Lewis Hamilton and McLaren to protect a 1-2 finish, had to tell Lewis Hamilton to slow down so they could get that 1-2 finish. And Ron Dennis, after the Grand Prix had finished, told Fernando that, but Alonso took that in the wrong way and took it as McLaren saying, Hamilton could have won, but we slowed him down so you could win. And from that point on, the relationship between McLaren and Fernando Alonso was just never the same. But it also does show that Fernando can be a bit overdramatic when it comes to his own emotions. And then we have one of the most controversial moments of 2007 at the Hungaro ring between Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, McLaren and especially Ron Dennis. Now basically what happened was in qualifying, Lewis Hamilton on his first run in qualifying was supposed to let Fernando Alonso go ahead but he did not do so and that angered Fernando a lot so in the pit stop to refuel Fernando Alonso deliberately waited in the pit box so Lewis Hamilton was delayed in getting back out on the track and that meant Lewis Hamilton could not do a final lap Fernando did and he only just about took pole position but because of that he got a five place grid penalty because he clearly destroyed Lewis Hamilton's qualifying even though Lewis definitely was wrong for disobeying team orders but Fernando's response was again way too over dramatic and was not needed and this is really where the disgraceful side of Fernando Alonso's character came out as after qualifying and also in the lead up to the Grand Prix on the Sunday Fernando really did something that for me was again disgraceful he first tried to blackmail the team by threatening to reveal key emails in the spygate scandal between mclaren and ferrari which by the way he did anyway because he already told ex-team boss flavio briatore so the fia was on to him anyway regarding those emails but then he did something absolutely terrible he told ron dennis on the lead up to the grand prix to make Lewis Hamilton's car deliberately run out of fuel to pay back him what happened in qualifying. This then led to Ron Dennis and Fernando Alonso having a massive argument and then Fernando was sent away by his team boss. And at one point in the lead up to that Grand Prix on that Sunday morning, Fernando was not going to drive the car at that Grand Prix. But then the FIA president Max Mosley convinced Ron Dennis to let him drive the car to avoid any further embarrassment. Then after that controversial incident, Fernando's emails that were key in the Spygate scandal resulted in McLaren getting fined $100 million. Now Fernando wasn't at fault for the Spygate scandal, but he definitely did play a part. 
And I don't think anyone can really doubt that. And then the final key incident between Fernando and McLaren was at the Chinese Grand Prix in Shanghai, where in qualifying, Fernando accused his team of deliberately messing around with his tie pressures so that Lewis Hamilton got pole instead of him. And it got to a point where Ron Dennis said the McLaren were competing against Fernando Alonso, their own driver. But to be honest, he caused his own downfall with his overdramatic reactions and disgraceful behaviour. For example, what he did post-qualifying in Hungary and in the lead-up to the Grand Prix was so, so, again, disgraceful. And that's the only word you really can use because that's exactly what he did. How McLaren ever employed Fernando Alonso again after that is mind-blowing because if I was McLaren boss, that never would have happened. And also, if I was Ron Dennis, when Fernando told Ron to make Lewis Hamilton run out of fuel, I would have sacked him on the spot if I was Ron Dennis because that is unbelievably uncalled for from a driver. And it's also unbelievably greedy to put yourself that much higher than the team. And that's exactly what Fernando did. And whether you like it or not, Fernando did contribute to McLaren not winning a championship in 2007. That's why I say that he did, kind of at the time, ruin that team. With his awful behaviour and quite a toxic mindset. And it was definitely the worst part of his career. But then in 2010... Fernando went to Ferrari where he had two golden opportunities to win the world championship of course in 2010 in Abu Dhabi and then in Brazil in 2012 where he just lost out again just like in 2010 to Sebastian Vettel. But midway through 2013 Fernando lost trust in Ferrari's ability to build a title winning car and it got to the point where in the 2013 Hungarian Grand Prix he basically stated that he was unhappy at Ferrari and he would prefer to drive someone else's car, which again, even though you are unhappy about the car you're driving, you can't do that because, again, you're putting yourself ahead of the team, but you're also, in a very demoralizing way, in terms of the amount of effort they're putting in to make the car as good as they could. And he was already talking to other teams during 2013 to the point where he met Christian Horner and Adrian Newey at the Spa weekend in 2013 to try and hash out a deal, but he could not. So he waited around to see for 2014 how Ferrari would be, and they were, of course, as we all know, terrible. And this is the season where Ferrari really lost their love and appreciation for Fernando Alonso because Fernando, during 2014 in contract talks, was not committing towards Ferrari. So eventually, because Ferrari felt as though he wasn't committed towards the team, they made the driver decision for him instead of him making the decision to either stay or leave Ferrari. So, for 2015, they acquired four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel, which did anger Fernando Alonso, not because he wanted to stay at Ferrari, but because the way the Ferrari announced it, they announced it as though they were replacing Alonso with Vettel instead of Alonso quitting before Vettel could join. But nonetheless, Fernando Alonso left Ferrari at the end of 2014, and it's safe to say in the last couple of years, his relationship with Ferrari dipped massively because again Fernando lost trust in Ferrari's ability to build a championship winning car but I think because he lost trust in his own team the team lost trust in him and also were demotivated because they had a driver on their hands who did not believe they could go and win and that just wasn't the right mindset for Fernando to have if he was going to make Ferrari eventually successful and then he rejoined McLaren in 2015 and as we know it was an absolute disaster because of McLaren and Honda's lack of communication over how the chassis and the engine should be held within the car. The Honda power unit as we know was lacking in a lot of power but the chassis was not allowing the Honda power unit to really do its work. And it led to an awful car by McLaren standards in 2015, 2016 and 2017. 
But again, Fernando Alonso did not help because he made plenty of comments, especially on Team Radio, that demoralized Honda in their effort to try and improve for McLaren. Such as that famous Team Radio incident at Suzuka in 2015, where he compared Honda and their engine to a GP2 engine. And comments like that are not going to help Honda improve because they need to be motivated also to improve, but they're not going to be with comments like that. And it just isn't the right kind of thing to say if you're going to try and motivate someone to improve. But of course, Fernando did that plenty of times and also so did McLaren, to be honest. And it led to McLaren and Honda failing massively and splitting at the end of 2017. So there you can see on three occasions he really did ruin a team or either ruin a team's chances of being more successful than they actually were. And I think the worst case for Fernando was definitely his second stint at McLaren because his comments and his attitude was quite poor. But also another thing I've noticed with Fernando during his career is that he's never really improved a car over the time he's been at a certain team. The only one I can think of that he did improve a car was Renault between 2003 and 2006. And I don't think we can doubt that the car did improve whilst he was at the team in his first stint at Renault. We can't really say though if he did improve the McLaren car in 2007, but we can say that his relationship with McLaren was terrible. Then in his second stint at Renault, the car did just get worse. But I think the biggest evidence of this is his time at Ferrari because the best Ferrari car he drove was the car he drove in 2010, which was his first season at Ferrari. And you could argue the Ferrari car got worse and worse until he eventually left at the end of 2014. And I don't think we can doubt that Ferrari were in much better shape as a team in 2010 than they were in 2014 because in 2014, Ferrari were a complete mess. Now in his second stint at McLaren, they did improve from 2015 to 2016, but because of how bad they were in 2015, they were always going to. But then in 2017, they were so, so poor. And again, Fernando's attitude and comments did not help the situation. And you could also argue the same thing with how McLaren's 2018 went because Fernando's attitude did not improve that year either. So I think we can see here that despite Fernando Alonso being immensely skilled and very, very quick, when it comes to his personality and his character, he does have a tendency to not destroy an F1 team, but definitely ruin their chances of success. And is definitely the last person you want to develop and improve a car, probably from Formula 1 in the last 15 to 20 years. He's a guy you put in a car that is already ready to win races from the get-go. Because if you look at the evidence, if you put him in a car that is not quite ready to compete yet, your chances of success are not that good. And I think during his career, despite all the quality he did and still does have, he definitely could have done better when it comes to this area. And to be honest, it is a shame that Fernando let his emotion control him so much in these vital situations. But guys, that's my thoughts on how Fernando Alonso did ruin several F1 teams. Let me know in the comments whether you also think that or whether you disagree, let me know in the comments. And also don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe for more content coming up on the channel. And also thank you to Crystal Racing for helping out when it came to research for this video. But until next time guys, it has been me, Chazza HD. Goodbye.